All right, Travis, back here with Modern Bay Company. We do Subaru conversions into vintage Volkswagen bay window buses. Uh, that's all we do, our bay window buses. And a few days ago, we did a wrap on uh, extending the cables that go to the sensors on your throttle body. Uh, now that one was for a 2000, 2001 manual transmission and the sensors that go along with that one are a little bit different than this one. And so I just wanted to uh, show you guys a different version of what we just did on that one as well. So. What you'll see here in terms of the lay of the land, uh, we've got our Modern Bay throttle body reverser. Of course, this is still in bare metal. This is just for mocking up, um, including our intake over here. So we've got this mocked up, ready to go. But um, the way that this was, hold on a second. All right, that was the powder coating oven. It <laughs> just went off. Okay, so the way that this was, um, before is this throttle body assembly was down here. And so all these electrical connections that go to the idler control valve, the throttle position sensor, and then even over here, um, the manifold pressure and temp sensor, um, they all fit just fine, no big deal. But since we have this to clear the firewall where the gas tank is over here, firewall, there's not enough clearance to just have it in the stock position. So we have to relocate it, put it up here. When we do that, the wires that reach these sensors are too short. And so what we need to do, is, to do is extend them. And like I said in the video a few days ago, there's no real magic to it. You need to know what you're doing in terms of you know, electrical work. But uh, what we do is we cut these. And then on this one, for example, for the throttle position sensor, which I have reversed, so just mounted it transverse the opposite direction. Um, what I've done for that, I've added what five, six inches uh, for each of these wires um, and you know good solid connections. By the way, on these, um, you know, some people will say, well, why didn't you solder it? Any connections that have a consistent or constant vibe, uh, vibe, <laughs> have a cool vibe, uh, have a vibration uh, to them, you don't want to solder. Um, it's also not the way that Subaru did it from the factory. They use crimp connectors. That's what I use. And then I heat shrink them um, as well with my heat gun. So um, they are nice and firm, not going anywhere. Um, and actually, I'll show you a few of the tools here in a second that I use to do it. But that's what this guy took, um, you know, extended these three wires. Of course, this isn't wrapped up yet and finished. Just wanted to show you the in-process version of this. So um, up here on the idler control valve, um, I extended these guys uh, about the same amount, but you'll see here, uh, some of these are over here, some are over here. So if you're making a bunch of splices uh, to your harness, uh, you wanna kind of break it up so you don't have a big bundle of splices all in one. Uh, so that's what I did on these, uh, both down below and up high. So when I wrap this, put split loom around it, um, it's not going to have a big, you know, fat chunk in it or anything like that. Um, and it's just more dependable over time. So um, I extended all these. Um, another quick tip or kind of secret to this, I don't know if it's a secret, it's just the way you do things. Um, so these wires right here, these uh, bigger, bigger gauge yellow ones, uh, what you, uh, those, those are important. I mean, all these wires are important, right? But these are important. They go to the fuel injectors uh, and elsewhere. But you do not want to splice in wire that is ever lower or you know smaller in size than the wire that you have on there. So this wire I spliced in is actually a touch bigger um, in terms of the gauge, but uh, that's fine. Bigger is okay. A touch bigger is okay. Smaller, definite no-no. So I splice that in, and then I can tie this back out of the way of my throttle actuation right there. And then another thing, you never want to just like yank and have a real tight 90 uh, turn to any connection. So using my heat gun, I heated this up a little bit just to bend it the correct direction that I need it to be, which is the opposite of what it was. And that gives it a new memory, uh, gives the, the wires kind of a new memory so that, um, so that they you know, won't ever, uh, that connection won't break or sever um, and it works a lot better. So. Uh, I'm going to wrap these up uh, real nice and tidy in split loom, electrical tape, tie them back, and then I'll put, um, I'll actually, I'm going to put a zip tie there and have this nice kind of uh, looped connection so there's no stress on these connection points in the future. So uh, same thing here. And that's kind of the wrap on, you know, what it looks like. Uh, and then real quick, I mentioned some of the tools. Uh, these are clutch. Um, so I use these guys for... Uh, wire strippers, they automatically size to the gauge of wire that you're stripping, which is fantastic. I did it old school uh, for years without a set of these, 
and then I realized these existed and I've never looked back since. So if you're doing a lot of this stuff, even if you're not, if you're doing a little bit, I would get a pair of these because it just makes it so much easier than doing all those strips by hand. Uh, next thing, uh, just a pair of wire cutters. I mean, pretty simple. Um, this is a pair of Klein wire cutters. Um, you need them, <laughs> get them. And then uh, this guy is the crimp tool. So this one I got off Amazon, it's WireFi brand, um, but, and it has, it's color coded based on the um, color of the connector, the size of the connector you're using. Um, this thing's great. So those are the three main tools that I use. And then of course, um, a bunch of connectors. Uh, I've got those by the boatload uh, over here uh, for all this stuff. Oh, and then the final thing, uh, my heat gun. This thing's great. Um, I actually have a custom little thing that I uh, bent up for the end of this so that when I'm doing a connection, I do it kind of like that so that the heat surrounds that connection. I don't have to do one side and then come around and do the other side and burn myself in the face or anything like that. Um, makes it real easy. Uh, all this stuff on Amazon or otherwise, it's not that expensive. If you're doing even one conversion, probably worth um, you know getting this stuff just so you can save time and headache and all that. So. Uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions. P.S. on this video, I actually forgot to mention all the wire that I have down here. So if you have done your wiring harness conversion, you have got boatloads of extra wires. Uh, keep those on hand for a hot minute because whenever you splice connections, do stuff like this, the ideal scenario is to match with, you know, like I said earlier, the same gauge, but also the same color. Uh, don't be that guy who splices in like a blue wire into a red connection, stuff like that. It's just gonna confuse everyone later if there is a problem trying to trace down wires and colors and all that. So uh, find the correct color wire uh, from your pile of Subaru wires or go down to your local auto you know, parts store, get the correct um, color wire and uh, do it the right way. So, all right, now that is it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much. Bye.